Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome to a quick Blender how-to. Specifically, we're going to be looking at how to model a low polygon sword today. Now, this isn't about how to use Blender. I've already done tutorials covering that. So uh, if you need a brush up or have never used Blender before, I'll link a pair of tutorials down below, one text-based, uh, one video-based, that will cover everything you need to know to follow along with this particular tutorial. Think of this instead as more like a recipe. What I'm going to show you is my process of creating, quick, quickly creating, a low polygon sword. So if you're a programmer out there looking to make better programmer art, this is the kind of thing you can do in five or ten minutes. Uh, and that's the entire idea behind this series. And I'm going to do more. I'm going to show you in the future uh, how to texture um, maybe possibly the sword, uh, how to create a building, and a few other things. Just basically, here's my workflow captured, and here's how you could create it. Now, th again, there's nothing to say what I'm doing is the way to do it. You can take what you want from it and throw away the rest. So there's nothing to say that my way is the right way. I just know my way actually works. Now, I've done a text-based version of this tutorial as well, which I will be following along step by step in this video. So if I pause on occasion, it's because of that, by the way. Uh, but here you go. This is, in fact, what we are going to be doing. These are all of the steps, and we are going to be creating this low polygon sword, or actually this one if you like it better. Um, so that is the process we are going to go through here, a quick sort of recipe on how to make a sword. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump in. So let me just move this guy off screen and scroll it up because I'm going to, as I said, be following it to try and keep the two as, as um, in sequence as possible. Now next up, I need to go ahead and turn on keys so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so the hotkey I use should be displayed right down here as I'm doing it. Now, the key thing that we want to do here is have a box centered about the origin. So we're at the origin right here. This is sort of the default scene, and that will work for you. If you've, done, if you've changed your default scene, what I need you to do is create a box with its center at the origin, so right there in the middle of the world. And now go ahead and oops, switch into edit mode. And if it's not already done, select everything, and then do Control-R for a loop cut, and then immediately apply it. So left-click right away so that it... Oops, so right click right away, sorry, so that it applies itself. Now we want to switch over to face mode and grab this end guy right here and click X and then delete vertices. Now make sure it's vertices and not faces. Otherwise, you will just delete this face out and we'll have all this extraneous junk here. So X and then delete. Oops. <laughs> so then I go ahead and do it exactly what I told you not to do. There. So delete vertices and now we have half a box, which is perfect. Exactly what we want. Now next thing we need to do, switch up back to object mode, go over to here to modifiers. So this little wrench right here, go down and pick mirror. All right, so first thing it's going to want to know is what axis to mirror along. And we want to do it along the Y axis right here. So switch from X to Y. So there we've just basically created a mirror of our uh, box. So we're back to what we started with. But now we can model one half, and it will automatically be applied on the other half. So switch back into edit mode, and let's get to work. So first things first, we want to go ahead and change this guy so that this is going to be the basis of our hilt. Um, so grab everything like so and do a scale. X. Let's bring it in a bit, and then a scale, and then Z, like so. Now make sure that you're in uh, edit mode, not object mode. Scaling in object mode has some uh, unintended consequences sometimes, so you don't generally want to do that. So you want to be in edit mode when you apply scaling and such. So now we have the base of our hilt. So our blade is going to come out this way, our handle is going to go out this way. So first thing, let's go ahead and create our hilt itself. Switch over to face mode and grab this end face right here, and just E to extrude it, and extrude it along the default axis. Like so. All right, perfect. So now let's switch to the side view. Uh, so in this case, I'll go to the right view. I'm going to turn perspective off. I actually want to be an orthographic. And select everything like so. So all faces are selected. And we want to do a bend modifier. Now you could do space bar and type bend, or you can do the hotkey of shift a W. And this will apply a bend. Like so it's not the best bend. Why are you not bending as well as you bent earlier? It's all where your mouse cursor starts. Let's start out even further. Shift W. All right, that works for me. So there we have our rough hill. Now, obviously, you could play with things however you wish, but this is a sword guard. And we can add detail later on. I'll show you a bit about how to do that as we get there. Uh, now, it's possible, though, I go back to the right view. See, what happened here is we pulled off of our mirror axis, and we don't want that. Now, the quickest and easiest way to get around this is go back to edit mode, switch over to vertex, like so, and grab these two vertex right there. And we want to set their Y coordinate to 0. This will bring them right back to the origin, like so. And then we want to do it at the bottom as well. 
So it's just our bend modifier moved us slightly off the origin, and we are back to good. Okay, so now we have our hilt for our sword. Everything is hunky-dory and magical. Now we want to go ahead and pull our blade out of the sword. Now we're going to extrude this face up. Now this actually presents a bit of a challenge, because it's a lot easier to extrude a flat face than a bent face, because if we extrude this, it's going to go this way, and then this cross version is going to go this way. It's going to create a bit of a pain in the butt for us. So instead what we're going to do is move these two guys to be parallel, so that this surface here is flat. So switch into edge mode, just grab that guy there, and that guy there. And now this is a little unintuitive, but you can flatten a surface by scaling it zero along the axis you want to flatten it. So what I'm saying there is do a scale, and then a zero, or a Z, and then a zero. So I did an S, a Z, a zero. I'm not sure why my keys aren't showing for that. Make sure that that's turned on. Let me stop and start, make sure that it's going. Okay, so try that again. Scale, Z, zero. All right, my keys are being stupid. Sorry about that. Uh, so that's why I did scale Z zero. So that said scale along the Z axis by zero. And that causes everything to basically become planar uh, or flat. So this edge and this edge are now at the same Z coordinate, which is perfect. So now we can easily do our extrusion out. Now next up, we actually need something to extrude. And this is easy enough. We're just going to do a simple loop cut right here. Now you notice as it's selecting, it's showing which axis we can do the loop cut on. So that's for the control R in edit mode. Well, if you use your mouse cursor, you can actually evenly space them. That's exactly what we want. We want two of them. So uh, two of them, then click and done. So now they're applied. Now what you might find is that's a little thick for a blade. So just so with both of them selected, which we've already got, we can just do a scale X and then just sort of move them closer together like that. Now what also we might want is to have a little bit of a point right here that our blade is not on. So we're just going to do a quick loop cut there as well. Okay, so now we have our hilt, and now it's time to make our blade. And this is actually remarkably easy. Just switch to face mode, grab that face right here, and then switch back to uh, side view, like so. And now we just want to do an extrude, or an E, and bring the blade up. We just want to do this a couple times. So, and now we have basically a blade. Actually, I grabbed that a little. So let me just switch to edge mode. I'm going to move these up a little bit. I don't like the so shift, select for edge loops. And let's just bring that up. What did I do there? Oh, why are you not full edge loops? Uh, ah, oop, wrong key. Sorry. Uh, edge. Select all. Oh. Sorry. Alt Shift. Should grab the edge loop. Should grab each side like so. All right, that's better. Why are you not? Oh, I didn't grab the top one. Sorry, I'm making a faffery of this. So grab that one as well. Okay. And let's just bring our sword up slightly more. So that looks a bit more swordy. Okay, perfect. Sorry about that. That was a little bit clunky. So let's Alt Shift select that guy and bring it down like so. So however many times you're going to want your sword to taper in, that's how much detail you want to add here. Now the last thing we're going to do is go ahead and grab this edge right here and just bring it in. So now we have a pointy sword. And we can bring it down slightly so that there. So we now have this nice pointy sword. And now we can use these other uh, polygons here to, to taper our sword however we wish. So if we want to taper it in, we can just grab these endpoints right here. So grab this guy here and this guy here. And just move them in slightly. And we can do it one more time down here. Just move it in slightly. So, so the type of sword, if you want a rapier or a bastard sword or whatever, is all going to be determined by uh, how far in you move these particular edges. So if you want a sharper sword or a flared in sword or a bold out sword or whatever, this is what's going to control that. And then this guy, ah, I keep hitting the wrong. I don't normally use this keyboard. So that's why I'm being a little awkward with it. This guy could come in as well. But you want to make sure you don't just scale this loop. You only want to scale the outside edge. So this guy right here. Otherwise, you'll move the, the mirrored axis. And everything right along this axis has to stay at zero uh, on the Y, or it's going to warp out weird. Just taper that out. All right, so there is our sword. Not the greatest sword we've ever seen, but it works for me. Now, one thing you might find yourself wanting to do is another loop cut, basically right here. Your call, if you add it or not. But this will allow you to actually bring the edge out. So you could grab 
you know, now grab that guy, that guy, that guy. Move that out slightly. And then now you have a bit of a bevel to your blade. All on your call if you want to do that. I'm going to keep the polygon count lower and not add that. But if you actually want to have an edge to your blade instead of having it be sharp like this, uh, you can easily add that loop cut right there on the inside. All right, so that's basically um, our sword coming together. Now all we really have left to do is our hilt. Now the hilt is the same basic process. Now if we look down here at the bottom of our sword, you'll see we created this guy right here, this face. That is um, what we extruded the blade out for. We're going to go ahead and use the same guy now for creating our hilt. Now, first thing I'm going to do is scale it X and make that guy a little bit fatter so it matches our um, blade nicely. And same deal that we did before. So we're going to want to do um, a scale Z0, which will flatten it nicely for us to bring it down. So now I'm going to drop it down a little bit. So it's nice and flat and ready to be extruded. And we just do an E, extrude that guy down, and then E, extrude that guy down. And then the same deal as before. We just grab each of these edges and taper it. Now, it could be possible that you actually want to taper this top edge in as well. Really, it comes down to the style of your sword, but basically there is a low polygon sword finished and done. Um, so again, you could, might want to bring this edge forward to make it rounder or whatever. Now, it's mostly a matter of adding um, detail, however you wish. You know, So if you want to notch the blade in, you could. If you wanted to round these guys off, you could. Uh, you could bring this particular face out rounded a bit more. Uh, but most of your, uh, your additional detail is actually going to come down to one particular type of operation, and that's a bevel. So say, for example, we wanted this edge to be you know, not so square looking, which is obviously a very uncomfortable looking hilt we've got going on. We can just come in here and grab that particular edge, grab both sides of it like so, and now we could do what they call a bevel. And this is simply uh, control B, and then as you move your mouse, it kind of bevels or chafers that edge. I just want to do it just a little bit like so, and there, see, now you see we've got a nice rounded edge going on, and you could do that here as well to give it, you know, not so square looking. Uh, you could smooth this edge off a bit. But mostly it's just finishing touches at this point. So that is a low polygon sword modeled. It is pretty much finished. The last thing we're going to do is switch out of edit mode, like so. Go over here to your modifier and click apply. This makes the modifier permanent and done. So now you have a low polygon sword, a total of 170 or 360 uh, triangles uh, modeled in about 10 minutes. And you could have done it yourself in probably about three once you know the workflow. And again, and you're not going to win any awards for this particular sword, but it's the type of thing that you can obviously build on, make it prettier in just a short period of time. And you don't need a whole lot more polygons. So the rest of this actually is going to come down to the magic of texturing, not polygons. So uh, this is probably a sufficient amount of polygons to use as a weapon in most games. Uh, so I hope that was useful to you. Again, there's a text-based version available on Game From Scratch. Uh, and I will also link in a couple of Blender tutorials if you want to get started with Blender itself. Uh, hope you enjoy that. See you later.